These are two banyan trees situated at the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics Library and Instrumentation Block. What's interesting is that these trees are older than the institute itself. They are a part of the well-known Rochelo Garden of the institute. Normally when you construct a building, you have a plan, you have a site, you go to the site, you clean it up and you construct the building exactly according to the plan. However, that's not entirely true as far as Ayuka is concerned. When the founding members of Ayuka came here, they discovered these two magnificent trees here. And they thought, is there a way to preserve them and change the architecture to adapt them? They came up with a brilliant idea, and more than two and a half decades from the founding day of Ayuka, these two trees still stand as is and are a part of the famous Rochelo Garden of Ayuka. So what is the idea behind the Rochelo Gardens? So you have to imagine that these two trees are two stars in space, what you call a binary star system. This animation shows two stars revolving around each other due to each other's gravitational force of attraction. The way this garden has been imagined is that this tree represents a star that's twice the mass of the star represented by this tree. Now every star has a gravitational field around it and any object within the field can experience the tug by that star. Now, if you take these two stars, which are rotating about each other, and you study the gravitational field around it, you can mark a boundary around it known as a Roche lobe. So this concrete uh, boundary that you see here, made of black stones, is the Roche lobe of these two stars. So what happens is that if a star is present, Within this boundary, it is gravitationally bound to the system. If it is in this Roche lobe, then it, it, then it is bound to this star, and if it is in this Roche lobe, it is bound to this star. Now, why do we study binary stars, and why do we have this? What is so special about these Roche lobes? To understand that, you need to appreciate that the Sun is an exception. It is an isolated star. However, most stars occur in pairs, triplets, quadruplets, and others multiple star systems. Now what happens in the case of a star is that throughout its life it's all about a balance of two forces. There is the gravitational force which is trying to pull everything inwards and then there is the pressure force ex generated by the nuclear reactions of hydrogen burning to helium taking place at the core of the star. Now at some point the hydrogen in the star is going to run out and you will suddenly have gravity but no outward force left and your entire star starts collapsing. Now what happens then is that the outer layer becomes dense enough that the hydrogen there will start burning and converting into helium. At this stage the luminosity of the star increases suddenly and it starts expanding. This is known as the red giant phase of a star. Now a star typically is much smaller than its Roche lobe but when it becomes red giant it can actually expand all the way to occupy the whole Roche lobe and eventually a part of the matter starts going into the Roche lobe of the other star. Then matter starts falling onto the other star and there is mass transfer from one star to the other. Now if this star happens to be a dense object like a neutron star or a black hole then the speed with which matter falls on it is so high that the matter gets heated to a temperature where it can actually emit X-rays. And so many X-rays are emitted that you can actually detect them here on Earth despite these systems being several millions of light years away. The recently launched Indian satellite AstroSat is in fact designed to detect such X-ray events. Now, the advantage that binary stars give us is that we can actually measure the masses of these stars, but it is very hard to do so when a star is all by itself. And the mass of a star is important because it is the one parameter that determines how the star will evolve as a function of time. Now, all of this could be explained to an interested student just by sitting here in the garden and looking at these two trees. And that has been a major vision of all the founding members of Ayurveda.